Hi, my name is Michael from the OpenUI 5 development team and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the new margin and padding concept that we implemented for release 1.28 of UI5. But before we get started, let me just quickly tell you a couple of details with this simple JSPIN example. So I created two nested divs here and we're going to apply a bit of margin and padding for the inner div. And now let's apply a margin of, let's say, 50 pixels to the inner box. So you can clearly see that the outer space between the outer and inner box was increased and the background color of the outer box is visible now. In contrast to that, if I apply padding to the inner box, then you can see that the inner background color is actually visible now in this space between the border and the inner text. And that's the real difference between margin and padding. So margin is applied outside of the box and padding applied inside of the box. So there's one more detail that I want to show you here because it's very important when you apply the UI5 styles later. And this is the width. So if you have set a width of 100% on your inner box of control, then it will actually go outside the outer box. And this looks kind of strange to the user. So you always want to work around this by setting outer width on the inner box. And then the browser can calculate the correct dimensions for this. And if you're interested more into the box model calculations, then you can also debug this very nicely with Google Chrome. So you just select the DOM element here, go to the Computer tab, and then Chrome will display you the dimensions that it calculated for this box here. Okay, so how do we do that in UI5? I'm going to show you this quickly using our Explore application where we ship all kinds of samples for features and controls that are included in UI5. So if I search for margin here, then I can see that there's two sections for margins and paddings. We're first going to talk about the margin examples, and I'm going to show you this using the margins all around example. So here you can see a couple of panels that have a different margin applied. And with UI5, we ship a couple of standard CSS classes that will do the trick for you. So for example, we have a tiny margin class, small, medium, and large, and this can be applied to each and every UI5 control. If we open the Chrome developer tools and take a look at this panel here, then we can actually see that the SubUI tiny margin class is applied. And this will internally set a 0.5 RAM or 8 pixel margin. And if you change this in your view, then you can also change it to medium, for example, and get an even bigger margin all around. But this is not everything that you can do here. We can also limit it to sides, for example. If we say only begin, then only on the left side or on the right side in right to left languages, a margin is applied. And we have also a convenience class that does it in begin and end. So if you don't want to have a top and bottom, then you just set this one. The other way around, it also works. So if you only set the top bottom, then you will get a margin on the top and the bottom side. And you can also see that this collapses with the next panel. So the bigger margin wins, but it's only applied once. And then there's another really nice thing, which is that you can also apply a responsive margin. So for example, if you set this class on the panel, then in a split app control, as we can see here, there's a one RAM or 16 pixel margin applied. But if we switch this to a full screen app, then you can see that with a large screen resolution, you will have a really big margin. And if you decrease the window size, then it will reduce the margin. So now we have only one RAM. And if we make it really smaller, then we have the margin completely removed so that you can make use of the whole screen size. All right, there's a couple of more things which I'm going to show you with other examples here in this section. So for example, you can also use these classes to remove margins. So if you by default have margins inside the control, then you can override them by setting the sub UI no margin classes. So for example, if I want to remove all the margins, then I can just set a sub UI no margin on the control. Whereas when I remove it, you can see that the object header actually brings a margin all around that is just overwritten there. So I hope this explains uh, the margin concept to you. There's also more documentation. You can find the links in the video description. So this is a margin concept. Let's quickly talk about paddings also here. 
and I'm going to go to the padding section for that. And we also have a couple of examples here to show you how the concept works. So for example, the responsive content padding can also be applied to certain container controls of UI5. So this panel is using the responsive padding and it's the same concept as the margin. I set the class to the root control here is UI responsive content padding. And if I reduce the window size, then you can see that the padding is actually decreased when the window gets smaller. You can also use these classes to override default paddings. So I think the panel has by default a padding of one RAM. And if I set the class subui no content padding, then can override the default and I can just say I want to layout it myself. And you can also combine both concepts. So if I want to apply margins and paddings for this control, I'm going to set a standard padding again, and I will add a sub UI medium margin class. Now we can see the effect that we talked about initially in the simple JSPIN example, that the control is actually exceeding the screen width because it has a default width of 100% set. So for this use case, we also provide a convenience class called subui force with auto. And now you can see that the control has actually a margin outside and a padding on the inside. There's also a couple of more examples for this here in our Explode application. This one is doing it the other way around. We have a padding for the container on the outside and the margin on the inside, on the single elements here. And this is also working nicely together. So I hope this helped you in getting into our new margin and padding concept and have fun trying it out.